how the survey will be starting module four. Three modules, how that completed? Yes, all of you please work in these papers. <coughs> all of you please work in these papers. Now, what happened? We have finished. So, this session will be up to 12 30, right? Again, 12 30 to 2 30, I will be taking from those people. So, by 3 o'clock, I will get back to you. 3 to 5. 3 to 5. Again, 6 30 to 8 30. Again, 6 30 to 8 30. So, that is our schedule today. Understood? Okay. But please maintain the time. So, 3 to 5 means by sharp 3 o'clock, you have to be here before me. And the same way in the evening, 6 30 in the sense of by sharp 6 30, you have to be here. Not like yesterday, 6 36, 6 40, 6 45. Hmm? Okay. So, please maintain the time. Yes. Right. Now, please open the papers. Booklet. Now, the problem number 61. Problem number 61. Ah. The problem is uh, the question is uh, one brass plate is inserted between two charges. The force between two charges will be will it increase or decrease? Decrease? Huh? Decrease or increase? Decrease. Why decrease? One brass plate is inserted between the two charges. Okay. So the force between the two charges will be now. It will increase because so look at this again. You see, so these are the two charges. This is Q1 and this is Q2, right? And here you will be placing a brass plate. And what is the brass plate? The brass plate is conducting one. Brass plate is conducting one. What it? And due to mutual okay interaction, what happens? You due to induction. Okay, so if at all this is a positive charge, the negative charges will get developed over here like this. Right? And due to this, if at all this is a negative charge, what happens? The positive charges will get developed over here like this. If at all this is also positive charge, then the same negative charges will get developed on the other side. So ultimately, what happens here? The intensities of these two charges will increase momentarily. And if at all you take any insulator between these two things, then the charge will clear. So force will decrease. Then the force will decrease. Okay. So if at all this is a conducting separation, conducting separation between the two charges, then the electrostatic force between the two charges will increase. Then the electrostatic force between the two charges will increase. But it like this. Okay. So the next question. A sure test of electrification is force of attraction, force of repulsion, force of friction, force of induction. Induction. Any more options? Ah, the sure test of electric force. Okay, or electrification. That means uh, when you electrification means what? What do you mean with electrification? You try to understand the meaning of this electrification. Yes. Ah, so electrification. Electrification means uh, that is the process by means of which electrical charges are obtained. Okay, the process by means of which electrical charges are obtained that can be taken as electrification. And of course, for that electrification, we have different methods. What are they? One is electrification by friction. Okay, electrification by conduction. Electrification by induction. Okay, so induction is one of the processes. That is not the test. But it, so by induction, we can electrify the bodies, neutral bodies. And in the same way, even by friction, we can electrify the neutral bodies. Even by conduction, we can electrify the neutral bodies. And what is the sure test of electrification? Sure test of electrification. Sure test of electrification is repulsion. Okay, you may ask one question. What is that? If at all a body is electrified, that means if at all some charge is located on the surface, that electric charge may even exhibit force of attraction. Then why don't we depend upon the force of attraction? Sometimes the force of attraction may also due to magnetism. Okay, and if at all any magnet is in the vicinity, even that magnet also will be exhibiting the force of attraction. Ah, the force of attraction also may be due to gravitational force. But the point? Okay, so that's if at all you take any two electrical charges. Okay, so if force of attraction is seen between the two charges, you can't come to conclusion that that force is just because of electrification only. That force may be due to gravitational force. That force due to maybe, uh, maybe due to 
magnetic force बरेपे so force of repulsion force of repulsion this is the sure case to form electrification repulsion is the sure test of reverse electrification okay the next one is um, in relativistic mechanics m is equal to m not by under root 1 minus v square by c square so the equivalent relation in electricity for electric charge is a q is equal to q not yesterday i told okay so this mass mass will get affected by the motion okay so in the theory of relativity einstein had given the equation what is the equation m is equal to m not by under root 1 minus v square by c square so this is the equation given by einstein but it okay but the charge is independent of velocity charge is independent of motion okay even if the ball there's a charged body is moving with certain velocity this equation does not hold good so the correct option is a q is equal to q not and coming to the next question two positively charged particles each having charge q and r at a distance d apart the third charge is introduced in between on the line joining the two charges find the nature and magnitude of the third charge which is in equilibrium yes what could be the answer what could be the answer small q is equal to minus q by 4 yesterday we had this discussion but it is okay so this is you need to take this okay what is that so this is the approach so this is a plus q and this is also plus q so in between exactly between so your third charge has been placed right now this is x you take then this also becomes x right now the force between these two things will be so 1 1 by 4 by epsilon naught which is nothing but the Okay, a constant. So k into so this is q q by x square. So plus so this is k into q square divided by two x whole square. So this is four x square. This is zero. So this is here k q q by x square is equal to minus k into q square by four x square. So these things will get cancelled out. Right? So this is x square x square. Therefore, q is equal to minus q by Four. This is the nature of the third charge. So the third charge is having the negative charge and its magnitude is one fourth of the so the given charge. One fourth of the given charge minus q by four. Now coming to the next thing, which is sixty-five. Two equal and oppositely charged particles are kept yet some distance apart from each other. A spherical surface having radius equal to separation between the particles and concentric with their midpoints is considered then okay so first try to understand the given situation two equal and oppositely charged particles are kept yet some distance apart from each other okay so oppositely charged particles means unlike charges so look at this here you see this is a plus q i have taken and this is a minus q i am taking these two charges are placed with some distance apart. Let the distance between the two charges be p small d. Let the distance between the two charges be small d. Yes, okay. A spherical surface having radius equal to the separation between the two particles and concentric with their midpoints. Concentric with their midpoints. Okay, is considered. The first you need to imagine one sphere. So, how to imagine a sphere? The sphere has to be in this sphere. And what about the midpoint? It is concentric. Concentric. Understood? So you need to take a sphere so that these two charges should be on the surfaces of the sphere. That's what the given meaning is. Okay, concentric. Yes, midway. The line joining the two charges. Find the nature and magnitude of the third charge so that can hold on this one. Ah, so having a radius equal to separation between the particles and concentric with their midpoint is considered then ah, the electric field is normal to the surface yet the two points only the electric field is always normal to the surface normal to the surface means to get this again you see so if you take the surface over here okay so whatever the charge that you are placing okay so the electric field will be normal means since it is negative 
Okay, I'll use direction. And since this is possible, write this in this way. Okay, so option B is correct. Next, option B, the electric field is zero, yet no points. Okay, because since you, you have taken the charge over here, even if you don't take the central charge, because of this plus Q and minus Q, there will be some electric fields which pervade inside the sphere. Okay, so electric field is zero, yet no point. Means every point will be having some field. So option B is correct. Next, option C. So electric potential is zero at every point of one circle only. Okay, so that means the electric potential. So that will be zero. That will be zero. That point because potential is the work done. Okay, and if you take the charge. Okay, so work done. You can moving the charge. So the the surface will be zero. So this potential will be zero. So option C is correct. So B, all of the above. Option B is correct now. A, B, C, all the three options are correct. A, B, C, all the three options are correct. Okay, next question. What is the magnitude of a point charge due to which the electric field 30 centimeter away has the magnitude 2? Has the magnitude 2. Okay, option A. Okay, did all get in? Did all get in? No? Should I discuss some? Okay. Okay, see here, what is the magnitude of a point charge due to which the electric field 30 centimeters away has a magnitude? Okay, two. So direct formula. Direct formula we need to apply over here. So look at this. The given situation is the magnitude of point charge Q is equal to how much? Okay, Q to which the electric field 30 centimeters. So this is a 30 centimeter. That is a 3 into 10 power minus 1 meter. Right? Away has the magnitude Q also 2. This is 2 units. 2 newton per coulomb or 2 volt per meter. Anything. Yes? Now, we know the formula that is 1 by 4 by epsilon naught. This is Q by R square. So E value is 2. This is 9 into 10 power 9. Q value we need to calculate R square. 9 into 10 power minus 2. So these two things will get cancelled out. 2 is equal to 2 into 10 power minus 2. Okay, 2. 2 into 10 power minus 11, 2. So option A is correct. Next question. A dimensionless body having a physical quantity varies as 1 by R square. Where R is the distance from the body, this physical quantity will be nothing but this physical quantity will be nothing but yes huh. a dimensionless body having a physical quantity varies as 1 by r square where r is the distance okay from the other side body huh. this physical quantity maybe maybe c c gravitational field Gravitational field formula. Gravitational field. So that is a okay, gravitational field E. Gravitational field. Okay. Gravitational field. Ah, so gravitational field. That is some G into M by R square. Understood? G into M by R square. Okay. So electric field, if you take Electric field 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into Q by R square. And if it has, you take this one as constant, so this is directly proportional to 1 by R square. Okay, even this thing also is directly proportional to 1 by R square. So there is a possibility for both gravitational field and electric field. Gravitational potential cannot be. Gravitational potential is equal to capital G, capital M by R, capital R. Understood? Okay, but in this particular case, um, okay, so what about the distance that you are going to take at? So, capital R we will take. So, capital R in the sense of that is the radius of the earth. That is the radius of the earth. But the point, so radius of the earth also becomes a constant. Understood? So, in the case of this gravitational field, so there is no possibility for you to have different R's. 
So there is there is a possibility only in this electric field. So the correct option is electric field. Now the correct option is electric field because the gravitational field seems to be gravitational field seems to be. But in the case of gravitational field, in the denominator, what do we have? Capital R. Dimension. Ah. So dimensionless body. Dimensionless body means uh, there is a point object having no dimensions. Having no dimensions. What the point? Okay, just like the points. Usually the point objects are created in the electric field, electric force, electric potential. In these three aspects, we will come across a point object. So the correct option is electric field because uh, only in the electric field we will be considering the point charges. Only in the electric field we will be considering the point charges. Okay, like this. Next question. A point charge Q is situated with a point on the ground. A point, a point charge Q of mass M is vertically dropped along a line from a multi-storied building of height H of height H. Okay, find the position of the point charge Q when it is in the equilibrium space. Option A, they say. Girls, what do you say? Yes, the point charge Q is situated in point on the ground. The point charge small Q of mass M is vertically dropped along a line from a multi story building at height H. Find the position of the point charge Q when it is in equilibrium. Now, the given situation I will be showing you diagrammatically. There is a multi story building. Look at the board. So, this is a multi story building like this. This is the multi story building like this. But it, on the ground, there is a charge capital Q. So, there is a charge capital Q based on the this. Okay, so that could be of any nature. That could be positive charge or negative charge, anything. Right? Now, what is the reason? This is the height H. This is the height H. So, from this top of the building, there is a charge that is small Q. Drop. Now, what happens? It will be falling down. It will be falling down. But that will not be free fall. But when, so free fall means uh, the body has to move only under the influence of gravitational force. Okay, but besides the gravitational force, uh, this charged particles on Q will be experiencing one more force also. That is the force of repulsion by this Q. But it, usually, if it is free fall, the body will be moving with a maximum velocity. With a maximum velocity, the body will be touching the ground. So, what do you say is that maximum velocity in the case of V4? So, V is equal to under root 2 GH. V is equal to under root 2 GH. But uh, that much velocity you cannot expect over here. This given situation is different. In what way? So, capital Q is there. Both are light charges, force of repulsion. But it, so the moment this uh, charge comes to a certain point over here, so because of course of repulsion, so the velocity of this charge becomes zero. The velocity of the charge becomes zero. Understood? Okay, now at this point, now this distance you need to calculate. So the person that we have to handle with is uh, find the position of the point charge Q when it is in equilibrium. Okay, so let the distance between these two things be R. When it is in the equilibrium state, equilibrium state means uh, the moment the velocity becomes zero, that point can be taken as an equilibrium point. Where the velocity is becoming zero, how many forces will be acting on the body now at this moment? There will be two forces. 
What are they? One is the gravitational force of attraction, which is particularly down force. And so the second one is uh, ah, so this is electrostatic force, which is gravity, which is particularly up. Yes. Now this m c in this particular case is equal to one by four pi epsilon naught q in the capital Q by R square. So this mean distance, this distance you need to calculate. R square is equal to one by four pi epsilon naught q into capital Q by m c. Therefore, R is equal to under root q into q by four pi epsilon naught into m c. So this will be the distance. Yet that particular distance, the second charge of magnitude small q. Will come to the state of rest. Will come to the state of rest. So option A is correct. Option A is correct. Right. The next question is: Two free charges Q1 and Q2 are released from rest in gravity, free half, when distance between them is a. Find the maximum speeds of charged particles. The mass of each charged particle is m. The mass of each charged particle is m. So what is the answer? Option C. They say. Okay. Option C. See here, in this particular situation, what's happening? Two point charges Q1 and Q2 are released from rest in gravity free hall. So there is no gravity. Okay, so the effect of gravitational force in the hall can be taken as zero. Right? When the distance between them is A, find the maximum speeds of charged particles, the mass of each charged particle is M. The mass of each charged particle is M. See here, this is one charged particle, which is Q1, and this is the other charged particle, which is Q2. The initial distance between these two charged particles is A. The initial okay, distance is A. Right? Now, these two things are like charges. Then immediately what happens? The moment you release these two charged particles, so what happens now? These two charged particles will be moving far apart. Got it? Okay. Now, when these two charged particles are moving like that, there will be some kinetic energy. Okay. So that kinetic of energy will be maximum because there is no gravitational force acting on this. When these two charged particles are getting distance gain, there will be some potential energy because of force of repulsion. Because of force of repulsion, there will be some potential energy. Now, in this particular case, potential energy P is equal to what do you say? What do you say? 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. So, this is Q1, Q2 by A. That is the potential energy formula. No, no one is speaking. Hmm? You forgot. Potential energy is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, Q1, Q2 by A. Now, the moment you leave these two charged particles from this position, they will acquire velocity. What happens then? Kinetic energy is obtained by the two particles. With what kinetic energy the first particle is moving? With the same kinetic energy, the second particle also moves. Because the magnitude, okay, so because the velocity will remain the same. Okay, so the kinetic energy in this particular case is equal to half m v maximum spin. According to the law of conservation of energy, yet 
array points, the total energy will be equal. Okay, so this is the total energy will be equal. That means half m v square is equal to 4 pi epsilon naught. This is q1 q2 by a. So this is two times. So v square is equal to q1 q2 pi 2 epsilon naught into m a. Therefore, v is equal to under roots q1 q2 pi. 2 pi epsilon naught to the A. So this is what the answer is. None of this. Oh, okay. Option C. Okay, no problem. And both of these mean the same thing. Option C. Here I have divided. Yes or no? I have divided. Got it? So this is if you don't divide this one, so two will be going to side. Then this is a two q1 two by four pi. Okay. So this is four. Okay. So option C is correct. Option C is correct. Next, question number seventeen. A point charge Q is placed at the center of a circular line of radius capital R, having the charge Q. Find the force of electrostatic interaction between point charges and the point. A. Okay, so look at this. A point charge Q is placed at the center of a circular wire. At the center of a circular wire. Okay, look at this. See, circular wire. And just like a ring. At the center. Okay, so the point charge Q is placed. Yes, the radius of this is R U D. Having the charge that is property. Find the force of electrostatic interaction between the point charge and the ring. That is why. Okay, since it is a uniform distribution, so whatever small q that cannot be taken as a point charge. But the point on the complete ring, we will be estimating as many elemental lengths as possible. And if you take one elemental length over here, so this is elemental length. Right now, elemental length, its length is delta L, so D L U D. Okay, so when the linear charge distribution is lambda, how much amount of charge is present on D L? So there is a D Q is equal to lambda into D L. Lambda into D L. So how many such elemental charges can be taken? Okay, so the charge due to this huh, will be here. Okay, the electrostatic interaction between this DQ, so DQ and the capital Q. So what will be that? What will be that then? So that is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. So capital Q into DQ by R square. Am I correct? And what will be the direction? With respect to this, if you we speak, so it will be in which direction? Electrostatic force, force of the function. Okay, so if you want to take any other particle, there is any other elemental length, any other elemental length which is opposite, diametrically opposite. Okay, so even here also DQ will be there. You know this DQ, what will be the direction in this direction? Like that, how many such DQs can be taken on this wire? An infinite number of DQs can be taken. How many diameters can be imagined? An infinite number of diameters can be so you mention. Okay, so you take any two opposite DQs for any diameter, by means of those two DQs, the net force will become zero at the center. The net force will become zero at the center. Understand? Okay, so zero is the answer. Zero is the answer. Option B is correct. Okay.
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटी वन ये स्मॉल एलिमेंट यल इज टच फ्रॉम ये सर्कुलर रिंग ऑफ रेडियस ये एंड लैंडा चार्ज पर यूनिट लें the net electric field at the center of the ring is yes ha ah, b lambda l by 4 pi epsilon not a square okay this small element same discussion same discussion dq q into dq okay see this here you need to calculate in this particular case the electric field not the electrostatic force see there is a circular wire circular ring A certain radius. This is the center of the ring. Right? Okay. So the radius is R U A. So here you see. So this is the radius that is here. A small element is taken over here. So the length of this element is here. So here you see. Some some small elemental charge will be there, which is dQ. And how can we say about the dQ? dQ is equal to lambda into dL. dQ is equal to lambda into dL. Understand? Okay. So what will be the field in the center due to that? So by Coulomb's inverse square law, that is one by four pi epsilon naught charge by R square charge dQ. dQ means that is lambda into dL divided by E square. Lambda into dL by E square. So that is the charge. D. Come on, please make a note of it. Okay, the next question is: A particle of mass m and having a charge q is placed on a smooth horizontal table and is connected to walls through unstressed springs of constant k. Okay, so both the springs have got the same constant spring constant k. A horizontal electric field E parallel to spring E is switched off. The maximum speed of the particle is how much? Option B. Option B. You say. What side? Girls, calculator. What do you say? This is very good problem. Standard problem. This is the standard problem. In which many approaches are involved in this problem. Look at this. Here you see the given problem. Diagrammatically, I will show. There is a particle of mass and having a charge Q is placed on a smooth horizontal table. So, what is the meaning of this smooth horizontal table? Smooth horizontal table in the sense that there is no friction. Whatever the frictional force which is getting developed, that frictional force can be ignored. Hence, coefficient of friction that is mu, mu k, mu s, all the things need not be written in these equations. We can ignore. Okay, so that is fixed to two walls by means of two springs. Look at this. The given situation is like this. There is a particle. Let this be the particle of mass that is given. Here, there is one spring over here like this, and this is attached to a wall. And this is one more spring over here like this. Even this is also attached to the wall. Okay. Now, ah, so this so here, if at all you apply force, what happens in one of the directions? So the particle will be moving. But in in one of the directions, the particle is moving. So when the particle moves like this, so, so here I am moving this way. Then what happens? So this is the spring of spring constant k. Even this is the spring of spring constant k. So when this moves over here, this is the initial position. And how do you say about the final position over here? Like this. See, the particle has come like this over here. Like this. Then this spring undergoes compression. Okay, but this spring undergoes relaxation. This is the wrong position. Understand? So whatever the displacement, the particle is moving. So this is the displacement that is yes. In this position, potential energy will be maximum because the moment you leave it here, what happens? The particle 
tries to come back to its initial position. Okay, in doing so, from this point to this point, the particle is moving with greater velocity. Due to inertia, the particle cannot come to this point it comes to the state of rest. The particle continues its motion. But the point, so how much distance the particle covers over here? Same distance the particle will cover here. So here also, that means a kind of oscillation the particle exhibits. Oscillatory motion is exhibited by the particle in this particular case. Oscillatory motion is exhibited. And during the oscillation, so what about this displacement? In fact, so this can be taken as the maximum displacement. Okay, so initial maximum displacement, x naught, I say. And that x naught is nothing but amplitude. Yeah, correct? During this oscillation, so this becomes amplitude. Amplitude means that is the maximum displacement shown by an oscillating body or vibrating body. But okay. during these oscillations, the spring oscillations, the x naught becomes amplitude. And how do you write the equation for x naught? The applied force in this particular case, this is the force applied. Whether the force is a mechanical force or electric force, that we will discuss later, just for the given data. <laughs> Okay, so some force is being acted on that particle. By means of the force, of this oscillation is obtained. Right? Now, in the case of spring concept, F is equal to, F is proportional to X naught, but that means the opposite direction. Okay, this negative sign shows that when the force is applied in this direction, the acceleration or the displacement will be in the opposite direction. When the displacement is in this direction, the restoring force will be there. The restoring force will be in this direction. So this is the restoring force. This is the restoring force. And so apply the force, the restoring force both the things are in the opposite directions. And this restoring force is in the opposite direction to this distance. When the particle is exhibiting the displacement towards the height, the restoring force will get on this body towards the left. Yes or no? So what about this? Huh. So F R, this is the restoring force that is equal to. Huh. So here, so there is a constant which is K into the X naught. Okay, so why did I write this K here? This is the spring constant. This is the spring constant. This is the spring constant K. This is the spring constant K. What about this cursive K? I have written this represents the resultant of this force. This is K plus K, that is 2K. K plus K, that is 2K. So the restoring force in this particular case, uh, this is minus 2K into X naught. But what about this restoring force? What about the restoring force that we come across in this particular case that is provided by the electrostatic force? Because the field is applied. You are not okay, physically putting the body, you are not applying the force, mechanical force. In this situation, no mechanical force is being applied. Whatever the force which is applied on the body, that is nothing but the electric force, which is due to the applied electric field. So, in this particular case, the form, how can you write? So, this can be written as Q into E. So, that is minus QK into X naught. Now, since I am talking about magnitude, so you put on, you take only magnitude in this particular case. Yes, so this QE can be written as 2K into X naught. 2K into X naught. Understood? Okay, so the second you see this X naught, that is uh, the amplitude. That is uh, the amplitude. Got it? And uh, one more thing. So what is that? Ah, so there is an amplitude. So here you see, here, since the particle is oscillating, it will be having some angular frequency, that is angular velocity. And what is the angular velocity that we come across over here? Look at this acceleration is equal to minus omega square x. Do you know this equation? A is equal to minus omega square x. Do you know this equation? Where did we get from? This equation. If at all, any particle exhibits a simple harmonic motion, what is the displacement equation? Displacement equation. 
So displacement equation is nothing but half. So a capital A, which is amplitude into sine omega t. So there is a displacement equation. That is the displacement equation. So from this velocity we can write. So what is the velocity? dx by dt. So that is velocity. If you differentiate this one, this is d by dt of a sine omega t. With respect to time, we need to differentiate. So then it becomes what? That is a omega plus omega t. A omega plus omega t. Differentiation. Okay, now this uh, I will be modifying like this. In what way? V is equal to the omega. This cos omega t, uh, so t we will write as 1 minus sine square omega t. 1 minus sine square omega t. So V is equal to A omega. Ah, so this A I will be sending inside. If I send this one inside, ah, A square minus A square. Sine square omega t. So velocity v is equal to under root a square minus a square sine square omega t. Yes. So this is the equation for velocity. When a particle executes a simple harmonic motion, the velocity equation can be written as omega into under root a square plus x square. Okay, so given this thing also becomes velocity equation. Now, the acceleration I want to obtain. Okay, so the acceleration A is equal to dt by dt. So, differentiation of this velocity. This is A omega cos omega. Now, when you go for differentiation, A is equal to, this becomes cos omega t differentiation, minus sine omega t, minus cos omega t, omega into sin omega t, already omega is there, omega square, a omega square sin omega t, a into sin omega t is nothing but displacement, that is x, so a is equal to minus omega square x, okay, a is equal to minus omega square x, and one more relation I would like to show, look at this here, in the case of this thing constant, f is proportional to x. Generally, I am right. In general, x negative x. Because restoring force is always in the opposite direction of the displacement exhibited by the body. Therefore, f is equal to in this particular case minus a into x. So, what is f? Mass into acceleration minus k into x. Therefore, acceleration in this particular case minus k by m into x. This is acceleration equation. You can distinguish also acceleration equation. This is in terms of spring constant. This is in terms of angular velocity. If you compare these two equations, what is there in the place of this omega square? Okay, so omega square is equal to k by m. K is a spring constant. If at all, in the given situation, there is only one spring, then it holds good. But there are two springs over here. When there are two springs in the given situation, so the combination of the two springs we need to take. So omega square in this particular case, k plus k, that is 2k by m. Okay, so omega is equal to under root 2k by m. So this is angular velocity. This is angular velocity. Okay, now kinetic energy. What do we have to calculate here? What do we have to calculate? The maximum speed of the particle. The maximum speed of the particle we need to calculate. Okay, so what is the maximum speed? Huh? Maximum speed means the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy that is half m. V maximum square is equal to half m. What is V maximum? What is V maximum? V maximum. Look at this. Here. V maximum. We have the maximum situation. V square. 
Okay, is equal to omega square. Yes. Omega square, yes square. Got it? Omega square, yes square. So this is here maximum kinetic energy. Maximum kinetic energy. So this half term, half term will get cancelled. So there is omega square and yes square. Omega square is what? That is root pay by root. Okay, so A is what? A in the sense of amplitude. So what is the amplitude? Amplitude equation somewhere we have written here. So there is the amplitude. Huh? But amplitude we have right now, let's say here. Is the amplitude given in this equation? X naught. Look at this. This only is amplitude. So X naught is equal to QE by 2K. QE by 2K. Okay? Right. Now, huh? So this is square, mean maximum square is equal to 2k by m and this is some q square e square by 4k square. 4k square, right? Now, 2, okay, we will get cancelled over here, this k. So what do we get now? Here I am writing the mean price. Ah, so mean maximum square is equal to Q square is square by 2k. Yeah, yeah, this one. Okay, so that implies V is equal to QE by under root 2m QE by 2mk. Okay, so option A is correct. Option A is the catch. Come on, come on, copy it. Did you understand? Yes or no? No talking, no murmuring. In the place of that V, I have taken A square omega square. V square. Why? Look at this. V is equal to A omega plus omega T. So what is the maximum condition? When time T is equal to zero. Okay. So this will become zero. Cos zero, one. So V is equal to A omega. Understand? That's why I have taken omega into A for V. Next question is a particle of mass m and having a charge q is placed on a smooth. Uh, this is over now. Okay, uh, seventy-three. So the point charge is projected along the x-axis of circular beam of charge q and radius of ten to two centimeter. The distance of the point charge from the center of the beam. Where acceleration of charge particle is maximum. What do you have, Sagar? Answer? Answer B. Okay. 
Answer B. They say 20 centimeter. Give me more answers. From the last minute, there's a different you can get an option. Why that particular option you feel? You need to show. Or you need to come here. You need to work it out on the board and you need to show you. This is how I feel option A is correct. Like it. Huh? Justification. Not simply logic system. Yes, the next problem. Can I erase this board? is a point charge is projected along the x-axis of a circular ring of charge q and the radius 10 to 2 cm. The distance of the point there's a point charge from the center of the ring where acceleration of charge particle is maximum. Okay, look at this. There is a condition over here. First we have to begin with the condition. Okay, see here there is a circular ring. This is the center of the ring. This is the radius. Now, this is the axis of the ring. Let this be the distance x. This is the center pole, and this is the point B of the Now, what is being moved? A point charge is projected along the x-axis. So, this is the x-axis. Along the x-axis, it is a projected in this direction. Yes. Now the condition is the moment particle comes over here, its acceleration is maximum. Okay, so acceleration. See the condition. Acceleration is maximum over here. Acceleration is maximum means acceleration is due to the force applied. So what about the force, which is electric force, that becomes max. Isn't it? That becomes maximum. The electric force is maximum means what do you say? What about the electric field by means of which the force is caused? That field will be maximum. See, in this particular case, whatever the electric field, so when it is maximum, then the electric force will be maximum. When the electric force is maximum, then the acceleration will be maximum. Okay, did you understand these three points? So ultimately, what is the conclusion we can do? That is, electric field is maximum. So this is the conclusion that we have to make out. For maximum electric field, for maximum electric field, so what is the condition? For maximum electric field, Huh. D E Y D 
dx and that should be equal to c. So this is the condition for maximum correction. Okay, so dx, dx. Okay, so the change of the electric field intensity with respect to distance should be zero. Then only it is maximum. Understood? Okay, so what is the electric field over here? In this case, electric field. So you do this like this. You do this like this. So what we do? So what will be the field? The electric field in this particular case, one by four pi epsilon naught qx divided by x square plus r square whole power three by two. So do you remember this formula? That you need to differentiate. And what is the radius given here? The given radius is 10 root 2 centimeter. 10 root 2 centimeter. Yes? Now, the E by dx is equal to V by dx of 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught qx time x square plus r square whole power 3 by 2. That should be equal to zero. Now, 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught becomes a constant. So, 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. This is in the form of d by dx of qx divided by x square plus r square whole power divided. That should be equal to zero. Okay, so what is this? V by dx of u by v. U by v formula. So what is the u by v formula? V into du minus u into dv divided by v square. Do you remember? Formula? Okay, so this is the constant I am shifting the sign. It becomes zero. That becomes zero. Okay, now, so this is v x square plus r square whole power 3 by 2 into d by dx of qx okay minus ah, minus of course this given q also can be taken as common norm and charge then that also becomes 0 then it becomes 1 okay minus ah, u into dv Okay, so here, 3 by 2, x square plus r square whole power, 3 by 2 minus 1, n into, so x power n minus 1, formula, x minus, so n minus 1, so this is 1 by 2, into 2x, divided by x square plus r square whole power 3 by 2, whole square, whole power Okay, even this thing also goes that side becomes a zero. Right now, look at this x square plus r square whole power 3 by 2 minus 3 by 2. Ah, this two, this two, you get considered. Okay, yes, ah, x into x square plus r square. Whole power one by two. That is equal to zero. Again, from these two things, x square plus r square whole power one by two. I will take this count. From here, what is left out? x square plus r square minus here three x. Huh? X square. Okay, so x square minus 3x square. This was the sign 0. Minus 2x square. This R square. Okay, so x is equal to. x is equal to r by n, 
root 2. So R is what? Therefore, x is equal to 10 cd. Therefore, x is equal to 10 cd. This is very good problem, standard problem. Yes, over. The next problem is if a charged particle is projected on a horizontal surface with a speed V naught. Find the value of dynamic coefficient of friction. Okay, dynamic friction. Okay, so this is, if the kinetic energy of the system is constant, if the kinetic energy of the system is constant. Now, again, in this problem, there is a condition given. So, what is the condition given here? The kinetic energy of the particle is constant. The kinetic energy of the particle is constant in some whatever the velocity which is maximum, that velocity remains constant. That velocity remains constant. Okay, so usually when the force affects the velocity, then the kinetic energy will not remain constant. The kinetic energy will get fluctuated. When the velocity changes, the kinetic energy also will change. When the velocity changes, the kinetic energy also will change. Okay, but in this particular case, Ke is equal to constant. 
physics. Okay, so there is a horizontal surface like this. There is a horizontal surface. The body is moving like this under the influence of directed force. Directrical force. Okay, since the body is moving in a particular direction, okay, so there's a here you see what will be there here. So in this direction, so there's a directed force, there is a QE is there in the opposite direction. So here frictional force will be there, which is FK, and in this direction, normal reaction will be there in this direction. The gravitational force of attraction will be there. This is the free body diagram of the body. Okay, so these are the forces that I have represented in all the directions. Ultimately, these are the forces which are acting on the body. Now, in this particular case, M and Mg, these two things are on the same line but in the opposite direction. So, these two forces will get cancelled. Therefore, there is no motion along the vertical axis for the body. Okay, the body is ultimately moving around the horizontal plane. The means uh, the horizontal forces are not getting balanced. The horizontal forces are not getting balanced. Understood? Okay, now in this particular case, what will be the net force? Ah, the net force is equal to, okay, so this is these two things are in the opposite directions. So this is QE minus this is FK is equal to zero. Why minus? Because both are in the opposite directions. Okay, so this is QE in this particular case, this is equal to FK. The frictional force, what is the frictional force? So mu K into normal reaction. But M is equal to MG. So QE in this particular case is mu K into MG. Therefore, coefficient of kinetic friction in this particular case, that is mu K is equal to QE by M into G. So this is what coefficient of kinetic friction is. QE by MG. QE by MG. Come on, note it down. Option A is correct. Yes, over. Yes. Next question. Two charges of value 2 microcoulomb and minus 50 microcoulomb are placed in a distance of 80 centimeter apart. Calculate the distance of the point from the smaller charge where the intensity will be zero. Where the intensity also will be zero. Yes, come on. Which one? Option A. Option A. You did all get the answer? Ah. Look at this. The given situation is so this is a two microcoulomb and this is 80 minus, uh, minus 50 microcoulomb. Minus 50 microcoulomb. Okay. So the distance between them is 80 centimeter. Calculate the distance of the point from where, okay, from the smaller charge where the intensity will become zero. 
So intensity will become zero means ultimately you are going to calculate the electric field intensity. Okay, so net intensity will become zero. See here, this is a positive charge. So due to this, the electric field will be okay in this direction. If I am to say that is given, this is a negative charge. Even due to this, the electric field will be in the same direction which is given. Okay. If you estimate the directions of these two electric fields, it will be like this. But in this case, what you will notice, both E1 and E2 are in the same directions. Both E1 and E2 are in the same directions. Since these two things are in the same directions, what do you say? Since these two things are in the same directions, what do you say? In between those two charges, null point, that is a neutral point, cannot be obtained at all. Understand? Okay, so radially outward means not only this side, even this side also radially outward. Okay, so this field should not be taken this side. The field has to be taken here. Then the neutral point is obtained over here. Imagine. So this will be the distance x to take. Right? Now, V1, how do you write? 1 by 4 by epsilon naught. 9 into 10 power 9, 2 by 2, 2 into 10 power minus 6 divided by x squared. Understood? Okay, so that is V1 is good how much? 18 into 10 power 3 by x squared. Next, E2 becomes what? Uh, so 1 by 4 by epsilon naught, 10 power minus 9 into, uh, so 50 into 10 power minus 6 divided by x plus 80 means 0 0.8. Understood? Okay, so the second you see, and this uh, you write like this one, this is 9.92. 9 okay, so this is 10 power 3. Okay, now, uh, so these two things will be equal now. Then only neutral point is obtained. Even is to be This is 9 into 2 into 10 power 3 divided by x squared is equal to 9 into 15 into 10 cube divided by x plus 0 0.8 so this uh, two things will get cancelled out. So this is one by x square is equal to twenty five by x plus zero point eight whole square. When you take the square roots on either sides, five by x plus zero point eight. So this becomes a five x x plus zero point eight. So this becomes a four x is equal to zero point eight x is equal to 0 0.2 so that is 20 centimeter x is equal to 0 0.2 which is nothing but 20 centimeter 20 centimeter like this okay next Right. Two charged particles of charges plus two q and plus q have masses m and two m respectively. They are kept in a uniform electric field and allowed to move for the same path. Find the ratio of their kinetic energies. Find the ratio of their kinetic energies. Okay, what is the answer? Option C. Or second? You did not get C. Huh? C or B? C. Okay. Let us discuss this problem. Right. Now, 
two charged particles of charges plus two q and plus q. Look at the board. This is one particle and this is the more particle. This is the first particle, this is the second particle. And how are their masses? Have their masses m and 2m respectively. So its the mass is m and its mass is 2. Its mass is 2m. Okay. Now, so this is the charge. And what so this one is taken here. They are kept in a uniform directed field and allowed to move for the same time. Allowed to move for the same time. Okay. Intensity of the electric field applied here is in, even here also. By means of this, uh, what is the acceleration of the first particle charged into that is 2q into e by mass? Okay, now here a2 is equal to how much charge into that is here into. Okay, now what do we have to calculate? You need to calculate the ratio of their kinetic energies. Kinetic energies. Okay, now look at this here, final velocity here. Final velocity. In this, here, in this particular case, the initial velocity is equal to zero. U1, even U2 is also equal to zero. Even U2 is also equal to zero. Right? Now, in this particular case, V1 square is equal to u1 square plus 2 into a1 continuous for the same distance for the same distance for the same time for the same time for the same time the pencil even in terms of time also we can make s is equal to u plus half here square also you can make okay so this is here v1 square is equal to ah. so v1 square is equal to 0 plus 2 into a1 is what 2 q into e by Okay, so V1 square is equal to 4 QE by M into this. Right? Now, kinetic energy, that is KE1, half MV square. Okay, half MV square. So, M, V1 square. Right? Half yeah, we will square value how much? 4 q e by m into this. So this m, this m is getting cancelled out. Now, first kinetic energy will become what? Ah, 2 q e, 2 q e into s. 2 q e into s. Okay, now the second kinetic energy we will estimate. For the second kinetic energy, we look at this V2 square is equal to uh, U2 square plus 2 A2 into this. Same distance. So V2 square is equal to 0 plus 2 into A2 value Q E by 2 M. So V2 square is equal to Q E by Ah, yeah, into this. What is the second kinetic energy? The e2 is equal to half m v2 Half m v2 square. Isn't it? C half a. Yum. Okay. The mass of the second particle is what? 2 m. Mass of the second particle is 2 m. So 2m we need to take. Mass of the second particle into velocity of the second particle square. Okay, so this becomes m um, v2 square. Okay, v2 square. So v2 square value I am writing over here. Q e by m into s. M m will get cancelled out. Yes, I will continue here. So the second kinetic energy is QE in the S. Now what do we have to calculate? The ratio of their kinetic energies. Okay, so this is KE1 by KE2. 
This is a two Q E S Y Q E S. That is two Yishu. That is two Yishu. So option C. So which option have you got? Same. Yes. Two Yishu. Come on, please make it faster. Right. Shall we take up the next one? An electron is projected with velocity 10 power 7 meter per second in an angle theta is equal to 30 degrees with a horizontal. In a region uniform electric field 500 Newton per coulomb is applied vertically upwards. Okay, uh -huh, 77. Uh -huh. One problem is kicked up. Okay, 77. An oil drop of charge of two electrons form freely with a terminal speed. Calculate the mass of oil drop so that it can move upward with the same terminal speed. If the electric field is 2 into 10 power 3 volt per meter, okay, which is applied. Now, what do we have to calculate? What do we have to calculate? Calculate the mass of the oil drop. Mass of the oil drop you need to calculate. Mass of the oil drop you need to calculate. Okay. Ah, can I erase this? See, this is the part of Millikan's oil drop experiment. Okay. So in Nilkan's oil drop experiment, what do you notice? There are two metallic plates like this. This is a positive charge. And this is a negative charge. And the electric field is from positive plate to negative plate, which is particularly up. The electric field is so this is from bottom to top, which is vertically up. Right? Now there is an oil drop present of electrics. Let the mass of this oil drop be m. In the free space where there is no electric field, in the free space, if at all, you allow this oil drop to fall down. This will be experiencing only one force, which is gravitational force. That gravitational force will be okay due to the gravitational force. Okay, what will you get? You will be getting the terminal velocity. The terminal velocity P you say. The radius of this drop that is R you say. Okay, so this is oil drop viscous. Coefficient of viscosity will be there, which is E tau. Coefficient of viscosity. Okay, coefficient of viscosity. 
viscosity, coefficient of viscosity, coefficient of viscosity, coefficient of viscosity. Okay, so that is data. Now, in terms of this terminal velocity, okay, this is R and this is beta. So, how do you say the force? Discuss drag, discuss force. Discuss force is equal to 6 pi eta A into R into G. Okay, so you have to say here, you see, ah, so here you are. Okay, so this is. RB is equal to. Here we can go. Understood? 6 pi eta RB. So what is that? This is viscous force. This viscous force is given by the gravitational force. Mg is equal to 6 pi eta RB. Got it? Now, coming to this situation. Mg is vertical power. What about the electrical force which is being applied to this particular arm? This is electrical force. Okay, ultimately the body is falling down. Ultimately the body is falling down. What the point? Okay, so that means what do you say now? What do you say? Ah, so this is here. In this particular case, Yang minus QD, that should be equal to this discus force. 6 pi theta. Okay, so the part field is moving up now. Moving up. So Q E by energy. Theta into R. Okay, so 6 by theta RV, that is called energy. So Q E is equal to uh, Q E minus energy is equal to energy. So Q E is equal to 2 energy. Understood? Therefore, mass we need to calculate. Am I correct? Mass m is equal to QE by Q e to G. So what is Q here? What is Q? Two electrons. Okay. Yeah, I will drop a charge two electrons. So m, so in this particular case, two electrons. Two into 1.6 into 10 power minus. 19. So E. So what is the intensity of the electric field? 2 into 10 power 3. 2 into 10 power 3 divided by 2 into 10. These two things we can cancel out. Okay. So this is 3.2 10 power 1. Okay. Minus 7. 3.2 into 10 power 1 minus 17 kg. So there is an answer. That is the answer. Understood? Like that. That the 6 pi eta RV, what is that? That is known as viscous drag. That is viscous force. Viscous force. Okay. Right. Next one. 
An electron is projected with a velocity 10 power 7 meter per second with an angle theta, which is equal to 30 degrees with the horizontal, in a region of uniform electric field of 500 newton per coulomb. Vertically upwards, find the maximum distance covered by an electron in vertical direction above its initial level. Above its initial level. Yes. Okay. Can I erase the board? Okay. All right. Did you understand the given situation? Did you understand the given situation? What is the given situation here? There is an electron. That electron is projected with a velocity 10 power 7 meter per second at an angle 30 degrees from the horizontal. The pins, what do you say about the path of the electron? Parabolic. Oblique projectile. Oblique projectile. Okay, so look at this again, you see. So this is the electron which is projected in this direction. The initial velocity is 10 power 7 meter per second. The angle of projection is 30 degrees. The angle of projection is 30 degrees. No need. Huh? Okay. Since the fellow went and just for time pass, you thought of going. Huh? There is not the need. Huh? If it is the need, now okay, you should another so you should go. <clears throat> so theta is equal to 30 degrees. So this becomes an oblique projectile. This becomes an oblique projectile. Got it? Okay. Now vertical distance unit calculates. Maximum vertical distance. So distance. So look at this here. You see, this is u, the actual direction of u. Then in the oblique projectile, so this becomes dx over here, and this becomes u y. Where ux is nothing but x component of initial velocity, which is u cos theta. Right? Okay, so uy is u sin theta. Along the x direction, the velocity remains constant because no force is acting. Only gravitational force the particle experiences, which is in the downward direction. Whatever the change that takes place in the velocity, that change will be only in the vertical component. Vy. Ux. This is here. Vy. Vx remains constant. Vy will be variable. But it, okay. So this is the height. Vertical height. So let this be distance y. Let this be the distance y. So this y, you need to write. Okay, so this is here for this y, you need to obtain the equation. Right? Yes, the particle is moving by this. So, what will be this? Vertical component of final velocity will become zero. But the horizontal component, the velocity will be equal to this. In an oblique projectile. Right? So, from the third equation of motion, Vy square is equal to u y square plus 2 into acceleration into but what is the acceleration see here so this is uh, what is the acceleration a is equal to 0 is equal to u y square u y square u y square u sin theta whole square u sin theta u is the 10 power 7 and sine theta, sine 30, so there is one by two, whole square plus. Okay, so two you do. So what is the acceleration over here? So the charge of particle, which is E, into capital E, by down into what? Understood? Ultimately, the particle is moving down, but the electric field is applied above. So this becomes a negative. 
Understand? So vertically upward direction, the field is applied, but ultimately the particle is moving down. So both the things are in the opposite directions. Therefore, so minus sign we have to put over here. See, this is some uh, R. So 1 by 4 into 10 power 14 minus 2 into E, 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 into intensity of the electric field is given over here. 500 newton, so newton per coulomb. 500, 5 into 10 power 2 divided by mass of the electron, 9.1 into 10 power minus 3 into y. Into y. So look at this 10 power minus 19 in this 10 power minus 12 times. 10 power minus 12 is coming up over here. This becomes 10 power 14. 10 power 14. I will be taking this 9.1 approximately as 9, 1.6 into h, uh, 5, that is h, 8 into 2, 16, okay, so 0 is equal to 10 power 14, I will be taking as common from both, here 10 power 14 is there, so after simplification, you have got 10 power 14, even in the second term, okay, now in this particular case, what do we get now, so this is 16, Right by nine into one, isn't it? Okay. So now, so in this particular case, ah, uh, so the y value this is unit calculate, isn't it? Ah, uh, one y. Oh, sorry. So this is one by four minus. So this is 16 by 9. Even this 10 power 14 can be brought here. Then it becomes a 0, right? So 16 by 9 y is equal to 1 by 3. Y is equal to 1 by 4 into 9 by 16. So y is equal to 9 by 64. 9 by 64. So that be. Okay. So how much will it be? 9 by 64. 0 0.1. Okay. So this becomes the 26. Right? Here. 4. Right? Okay, so zero, not sufficient. Okay, so how many times can we take this? Six times. Understood? Is that wrong? Okay, so y is equal to zero point meters. Okay. So this can be represented in terms of ah uh, okay up to this here up to here in Jupiter you take this some uh, 40 uh, 0 0.4 so this is 14 centimeters this is 14 centimeter so option B is cash option B is the cash Option D is correct. Okay, so the next thing problem is 79. A pendulum bar of mass M and charge Q is suspended by a thread of length M. The pendulum is placed in a region of a uniform electric field E, directed vertically upward. Okay, so if the electrostatic force acting on the sphere is less than the gravitational force, calculate the period with which the pendulum oscillates. The period with which pendulum oscillates. Okay, what will the answer? 
option B, they say. Option B. Right. Can I hear some more? Yes. Now, the problem is <coughs> here a pendulum bob of pass M and the charge Q is suspended by a thread of length L. So there is a simple pendulum arrangement. There is a simple pendulum arrangement. Like this. The mass of the bob is M and the charge on the bob is Q. Okay. Now what's happening? A uniform electric field is applied in the vertically upward direction. Okay. So, uniform electric field is applied on the this. The intensity of the electric field is capital E. The intensity of the electric field is capital E. So, this is directed vertically up. If the electrostatic force acting on the sphere is Hello. Okay, so if the electric force is that thing on the sphere is less than the gravitational force. Less than the gravitational force means so why did he mention this word? Huh. See what about the electric force which is being applied on this? Okay, this is sphere. So that is less than the gravitational force which is getting. Therefore, what happens? Sir? What happens? Sir? There will be no disturbance for the oscillation. Of course, sir. amplitude may decrease, time period may decrease, time period may decrease. But the point, but the thing is, sir, oscillations will be obtained because sir, ultimately gravitational force is dominating. The thing is, different. You come to this extreme position. From this extreme position, the body will be coming back. Understood? Because of gravitational force, more gravitational force. Understood? So what will be the net acceleration? So what is the time period? The formula for time period of simple pendulum is uh, L by G. G means acceleration due to gravity. If at all the pendulum is oscillating only in the free space, that is also gravity. But uh, here the acceleration will get affected. So the acceleration is D dash. Net acceleration. Okay, so now, so what are the forces acting on this? Uh, See here, so this is F G that is vertically down and F E which is vertically up. And what is the net force acting on the bow? So this is F G minus F E. Why not F E minus F G? Because already he clearly he mentioned. So gravitational force is more than the electrical force. Gravitational force is more than the electrical force. Therefore, F G minus F E. So that we have to take. Right, so this is F dash that is a mass into A dash is equal to so this becomes M G minus this becomes a Q D by Q E. Okay, so A dash is equal to G minus Q E by L. So this is the acceleration. Therefore, the time period becomes some 2 pi under root L by G minus Q E by L. So this is what the time period of the simple pendulum in this case. Time period of simple pendulum in this case. Right. Okay. 
Okay, <clears throat> the next one. Identical charges of magnitude Q are placed with n minus 1 corners of a regular polygon of n stripes. Each corner of the polygon is at a distance of from the center. The field at the center is option A. Okay. So look at this here. The given situation is uh, there is a regular polygon having n sides. Okay. So for example, the polygon I will be taking as hexagon. Anything we can take. Okay. So hexagon I am taking. Hexagon means uh, having six sides. Right? Okay. So if there are n vertices, so the equal charges are placed with if the vertices equal to n minus one, n minus one. So you see, if the vertices are six. Now, at five vertices only. So this is one, two, three, four, five. Understood? Okay. So this is here. What else is given here? The field at the center is. Okay. So this is this is the center. So this is. This is. And this is the line. This is the center wall. This is the distance R and D. R, R, by S. Okay, so the electric field between the due to this and this will get cancelled out. The electric field between this and this will get cancelled out. This remains. That remains. Okay, so the electric field in this particular case 1 by 4 by epsilon R, which is a constant K. So there is Qy R K in the Qy R squared. So that will be the intensity of the electric field get the center. Okay. Ah, now the line is okay, 4.25. Okay, so 5 minutes to 4.30, right? So I will be concluding now, right? Because now this is by 4.30, I have to take that session.